Hi again, this is Eric, Spurs Program Coordinator. With me is Tom Lindsay, who is an assistant instructor in the Department of Rhetoric. He teaches the 306 course, which you're engaged in right now. Today he's going to talk to us about communities, ideology, and uh, I forgot it. Commonplaces. And commonplaces, yes. So he's clearly the expert. I'm going to turn it over to him and let him do his thing. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Eric. Hi guys, um, it's good to be up here in front of you. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you about three concepts that I think are super important to think about when you're you know, thinking about controversies, when you're thinking about arguments and persuasive writing, which you guys are in this course. Um, those three terms, as Eric said, are communities, ideologies, and commonplaces. Again, three very important terms to think about when you're both being an analyst of writing and when you're engaging in persuasive writing, which again are two things that you're going to be doing in this course. So I guess just to, just to start off, we'll start with communities first, then we'll talk about ideology, then we'll talk about commonplaces. Um, communities are important to think about when you're being an analyst and a writer of persuasive writing because communities are important contexts in which arguments occur, in which controversies occur, in which people are engaging in persuasive writing. Communities are groups of people who are basically unified by common beliefs, common values, um, common interests, right? A community is a group of people that are going to have um, or be unified by a kind of common stake in or a common interest in a controversy, right? I think when you're being an analyst or a writer of persuasive writing, it's particularly important to think about uh, communities because, again, they're important contexts in which argumentation happens. Um, arguments happen between members of the same community or people tend to align with a certain community when they're taking up a position in response to a controversy. So just to give you an example, um, just recently, I think this week, the governor of Texas, actually, Rick Perry, declared what he calls a war on illegal illegal border crossing, people who are crossing the border illegal between the U.S. and Mexico. Um, and basically what Rick Perry is arguing is that the U.S. government isn't doing quite enough to address this problem. And so what he's done is um, basically enlisted and sent large numbers of Texas state law enforcement and homeland security officers to assist the United States government homeland security officers who are already policing the border, right? And this is basically a move in a kind of ongoing controversy about how the United States government or state governments should regulate the flow of illegal people and illegal goods across the U.S.-Mexico border. And this is an, an issue, it's a controversy that is particularly relevant, um, I guess, to, to all Americans, particularly to people who live um, in border states and particularly to people who live close to the border. So we might say that folks who live, um, I guess, close to the United States-Mexico border in Texas are a community, right? They are unified not only by a geographical place, they're also unified by a common stake that they have in this issue of, you know, any kind of illegal border crossing, right? And so when, when you're thinking about analyzing persuasive arguments that are being written in response to this controversy, when you're thinking about if perhaps you take up this controversy and write your own persuasive argument in response to it, a community is going to be very important to think about, right? Because um, you're going to be writing from within a community, right? There's going to be a certain amount of people who agree with your position on this controversy. You can consider them the community from which you're coming. You might be speaking to a certain community when you're making your persuasive argument. Um, and you might also be responding to communities of people who disagree with your position, right? Um, so I suppose a good place to move now, after we've talked about community, is to talk about ideology. Um, ideologies are basically, if you want to stop definition, ideologies are complex sets of beliefs, ideas, or values, or assumptions that tend to operate and kind of, I suppose, yeah, that tend to sort of happen together, that tend to operate together. They operate so closely that they are often taken up together, right? Um, ideologies are very, very important because they help people kind of organize themselves, their senses of themselves, their sense of, of, their, of the world, right? And their sense of their own position within the world. Ideologies are those belief systems that also tend to be characteristic of specific communities. Communities tend to be unified around um, or within certain ideologies or certain belief systems, right? And when you're thinking about being an analyst of or a writer of persuasive arguments, ideologies are very, very important to think about because they tend to dictate 
the way people respond to certain controversies, right? Um, they'll dictate the way you respond to a controversy, they'll dictate the way your community responds to a controversy, they'll dictate the way your audience responds to a controversy, and thus they become very, very important to think about um, in so much as they provide you with tools, beliefs, ideas, values that you can use when both reading persuasive writing and being critical of it, and also when you're writing persuasive writing. So just to give you another example, right, if we stay on with this, um, the example of the controversy surrounding illegal immigration and illegal border crossing, um, specifically in Texas, um, I guess, although while you could say that the folks that live on the Texas border, right, are unified, are a unified community in so much as they all have a common stake in this issue of illegal border crossing, people within that community are also going to be divided into different communities according to how they ideologically respond to the controversy of the illegal border crossing. So for instance, on one side you're going to have um, conservative people responding to this controversy. You'll also have people um, who are liberal responding to this controversy, right? These are two different ideologies, conservatism and liberalism. So to give you specific examples of how these ideologies operate in this controversy, people who are concerned with illegal border crossing, who are conservatives, who subscribe to a conservative ideology, tend to prioritize, um, let me think how to say this, they tend to focus on all illegal immigration, all illegal border crossing as a criminal act that threatens the United States, that threatens the lives of Americans, that threatens American sovereignty, right? They focus on it as a criminal action, and they also tend to prioritize the defense of America and American people over, I guess, their concern for humanity in general, right? On the other side, people who subscribe to a more liberal ideology, um, who are also concerned with illegal border crossing, are going to focus on illegal border crossing not as a criminal act, they're rather going to, I guess, prioritize a general concern for humanity, rather than a concern particularly for America and Americans in general, right? They, they will tend to focus on those people who are crossing the border illegally, not as criminals, but as people who might be coming across out of, out of a need, um, out of great need, out of desperation, right? And so, subscribing to one or the other of these ideological value systems, right, the one conservative prioritizes the defense of America and American values, the other prioritizes a kind of concern for humanity in general, is really going to dictate how you respond to the controversy of illegal border crossing, right? So again, if you're engaging um, in this controversy as an analyst of persuasive arguments that are being written, if you're actually making an argument in response to this controversy, then considering the different ideologies that influence how communities respond to the controversy is going to be very useful to you, right? Um, because again, it's going to provide you with an important sense of why arguments look the way they do, why writers are using certain persuasive tactics to try and convince a community of something, um, or if you're writing persuasive writing, they're going to provide you with a set of tools and a knowledge base that you can use to make effective arguments, right? And so finally, I want to, I'm going to move now to a discussion of commonplaces. Commonplaces are basically statements of belief or value, right? They tend to encapsulate and articulate ideologies, right? We might say that ideologies are made up of commonplaces. Um, we might also say conversely, or not conversely, but relatedly, I suppose. We might also say that commonplaces, again, encapsulate or um, articulate or embody in kind of small ways larger belief systems, larger ideologies. So as someone who is analyzing or engaging in persuasive writing, commonplaces are a good, are a good thing to think about, right? Because um, when you're reading persuasive writing, they will often point out to you places where a writer is engaging ideology, where a writer is trying to speak to the ideology of the person they're writing to. On the other hand, if you're engaging in persuasive writing, commonplaces will actually again provide you with a tool that you can use to speak to the ideology of your audience. So finally, to give you another example, if we're talking about this controversy of illegal border crossing, right? Um, commonplaces get bandied about in this controversy all the time. On one hand, folks who are coming at this controversy from a, con I guess, a conservative point of view tend to use commonplaces um, when they're arguing for a kind of strict, um, almost militant or criminalizing response to illegal border crossing, right? When they, when they want more police officers on the ground, when they want to criminalize people who are coming into the country illegally, they tend to use phrases like defend America, right? Or 
all illegal immigrants are criminals, right? And these are short, pithy statements that really embody, encapsulate, and express in a short way the larger conservative belief system that undergirds their arguments. On the other hand, if you have someone who is coming at this controversy from a liberal point of view, they might be using common places such as, we're all human beings, or illegal immigrants are just looking for a better way of life, right? And these are short statements that really give expression to their larger liberal, view, uh, I guess, value system or belief system, um, which really prioritizes kind of humanity in general over Americans and American safety. So again, thinking about commonplaces is super important when you're engaging in analyzing or writing persuasive writing because they point out to you places in which ideology is functioning, places in which writers are using ideology to be good writers, effective uh, arguers, right? And they also provide you with a set of tools that you can use to speak to your audience when you're engaging in persuasive writing. So again, those are just three really important concepts to be thinking about when you're, when you're in this class doing the work you're doing, whether you're writing your annotated bibliography or whether you're writing your synthesis paper, communities, ideologies, and commonplaces.